comparing apples to apples and, you know, uh, he kind of makes them pick, you know, eliminate, he goes sees one, they'll go see the next one and say, okay, which one do you like better? Okay, let's throw this one away. And he'll have the printout of this. Is that kind of what you would do? Or do you just go to any houses they want to see? And Yeah, so let's go over scheduling uh, houses real quick. Have you figured out showing time pretty well? No, I haven't even messed with that yet. So say you were going to do this one. You were going to schedule this this house. Uh, you see that showing time right next to documents? The, uh, showing cart? No, go go down below maps. Oh, right here. Yep, hit that. So showing time's awesome. Um, before you go into this, go back to the MLS. So the tab right to the left of this one. Scroll down to show. Scroll down a little bit. You see showing instructions, showing requirements. Yeah, vacant on lockbox. So this one isn't even requiring you to do showing time. But if you were to do showing time, if it said uh, requires showing time, sometimes they want you to call the agent. Sometimes they want you to text the seller. But for the most part, you're going to see it in a showing time instruction. So go back to the showing time tab. If it For, for 90% of them, they're going to be showing time. Whoops. Oh. Oh. So you're going to schedule a single showing and, and we won't go all the way through it, but hit that schedule single showing. That way you're not setting it up for when you're not going to do it. What's cool about showing time when you get a listing um, and, and they just added this like six months ago. Um, whenever anybody schedules a showing time on your listing, it's, you can set it up to where it texts you, uh, calls you and emails you or one of the three. And, uh, and it does it at the same time. It texts, emails and calls the, the people that are in the house and, and, uh, asks them if it's okay to show it at a certain time. So right now, like if you wanted to show it at 5.30, you would just click on the 5.30 there on Thursday the 10th. And it's going to ask you, like, how long do you need? So generally what I found, <clears throat> if I'm showing everybody in Rio Rancho specific or in a, a geographic area that's about Rio Rancho specific where we're about 20 minutes apart, I... I schedule, say you're scheduling five showings, I schedule them uh, 15 to 20 minutes apart. So the first showing I'll schedule from uh, 5.30 to 6.30. The second one I'll schedule from 5.45 to 6.45. The third, 6 to 7. And that generally gives me time for them to walk through the house. <clears throat> and, uh, and it gives me an hour leeway if they spend more time in the house than possible, than, than I wanted. So you would just do that on this screen. Don't do it because you're not going to, you're not going to show this one in particular, but. Um, so, so I am showing this one um, on Sunday to Mariah's parents. Let's do it. Let's do it. So uh, X out of that. So that's why I want to do a CMA on this. Do you usually, so you, do you usually do CMAs for them ahead of time or just wait until they find a property they actually like and then do one? I usually wait until they find one. So okay. on average, uh, and it's probably a little aggressive, but on average in my mind, if I show 15 houses, I sell one. So, okay. so you don't want to do 15 CMAs. I generally tell people, hey, if this is a house you want to make an offer on, I'm going to do my due diligence and I'm going to do a CMA for you so that we know what to offer on the house. Okay. For the first time yeah. when you do that, if you need some help with that, let me know and we'll get on the computer and we'll do it. But uh, market has a lot to do with with uh, value. And right now we're in a super hot market and we're in an aggressively um, appreciating market. In other words, like 
when you do a, a CMA for six to 12 months back, the house is probably worth more than that. Um, on the listing side, I'll tell you, um, I don't, I don't really tell them that because I want them to have success because yeah. the longer somebody's having they're they're on the market, uh, the more they get, uh, exhausted by the marketing process and getting kicked out of their house. So I want them to sell within 30 days if I can get them to do it, do that. And we, we, this year we've, our longest listing sold in 15 days. So, uh, and, and that was, that was the outskirt point on the graph. I mean, most of our listings have sold in one or two days. They've sold, okay. I would say the majority, 90% of them have sold in seven days within uh but if you're gonna if you're gonna do this on sunday just pick your time on sunday if you just want to go back to the showing time tab there sorry no you're good man sunday at what time um uh it doesn't matter because it's vacant, right? It'll probably be around three or four. So I'd put it between three and four. Go ahead and hit three. Hit three? Yeah, if you're going to do it between three and four. And then optionally indicate the latest time that you might be at the property. Just put it to give you enough room to get there. So if you want to put four or 4.30. Okay. I never put the the buyer's name in there okay. and then just hit yes. What it's going to do for you here in a few minutes, it's going to probably text you and call you. You'll get a 1-800 number call and it'll tell you if they confirmed it or not. Um, but, uh, just systematically, if you think if you're going to show five properties on Sunday, I know you're not going to, but if you're going to show them five properties and starting at three, start the first one from three to four, the second one from three fifteen to four fifteen. Uh, okay. One so you schedule fifteen minutes apart, but for an hour. Yeah, because it gives you an hour of grace time to catch up if they spent twenty five minutes at the first property. Okay. And, and for the but, most part, that works for most buyers. There are some buyers that like spend a half hour on each property, but I would say that's like one out of 50. Okay. But will you limit how many houses are showing a day or will I, you just? I do. I think it's smart. I think four is probably too little. I tell people between five and seven. Five and, and seven. And, and one of the things that I find most successful is on the first property, I usually tell them, Michael, hey, um, we're going to do two things uh, on every property that we show today because I realize that the, the confusing thing is after you've seen seven properties, ten properties, you're going to confuse the bathroom of the first property with the bathroom of the fifth property, and, and it's going to get all confused in your mind. So I want to keep in your mind, Michael uh, – just your top three. So we're going to do two things. One, we're going to. So I have a call coming in. Should I answer it or no? Go ahead, man. Is it that? Is that that 877? Is that the showing time? That's it. Yeah. That's showing time. Yeah. Oh. You just got the confirmed showing. Okay. Yeah, it's just the confirmation. So uh, showing time is super helpful. It's helpful for you in a couple ways. And when you get your first listing, call me because I'll help you set up showing time to where you can get a uh, customized feedback for each showing too. Uh, but okay. uh, for now, that's how you schedule showings. Um, okay. Check the MLS showing comments and then follow the directions. 90% of them will be on showing time. Okay. And that's, that's here, right? That's to set up showing time. But if you're scheduling, okay. go back. Well, I, if you're scheduling, 
scheduling them, go to the tab to the right, uh, one to the left, and then right to the right, right there. Yep, that's yeah, right. But I'm saying if I go here, will I see the ones I have scheduled or? Uh, go to showings, right under home on the left hand side. Go to calendar. Yep. Cool. Is it there? Yeah. It's yep. cool. Cool. Alrighty. Yeah. Um, so I have that one and then uh, <sighs> you guys have a good shift, man. Yeah, we slept both nights, man. It was it was great. <laughs> nice. And then we'll usually print these out for the for them, and so you have a have that when you go show them, or yeah. So you're gonna schedule this one. Yep. Let's schedule this one. And I'll show you how to print them. Okay. So you only have two properties that you're gonna show that day. Yeah, they just want to see these two. So it's uh, Mariah's mom, and she used to be a realtor, so. <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm hoping I get them as my first clients so she can <laughs> she's helping me out through the way too <laughs> yeah yeah that's great man in in that first client that you get I'll show you how to reinvest that money to where where you can take off a little bit more uh, yeah. hit that schedule sh single showing and that first one you did at three to four so do the next one at 315 to 415 right here Yep. It's going to it's going to say that they you have one right now but just continue, yeah. And then to 415. Do you have a printer? I do. Perfect. If you want to go back to 980 Yeah. So, uh up above where it says save email print, yeah, print. So what I always do is I always give them a color copy in the cup in, in the copy you're, you're gonna give them is the public version. So you're under public right now. If you yeah, you see the public, perfect. Now go down to preview. It's all the way at the bottom on the left hand side. Hit preview. Hit print. And I organize my stack of listings to in two. I want I want a listing. I want a printout for me, and I want a printout for them. And the public version is going to be in color, generally for me. And so yeah, you can. And I do. I generally hit two sided, just so I'm not printing them on two pieces. So down on the lower left options. Yeah, two-sided, hit print. Perfect. Now, versions, go to private. This will give you more details than the public version. This gives you, like, showing options options and everything. Hit hit preview again. Yeah, perfect. It, it switched. So this gives you, like, uh, the LOSO instructions, the showing instructions. If it, and you want to look at the showing instructions because sometimes they have an alarm or something like that or pets or like cats that you don't want to let out the front door. Um, okay. This one doesn't. But then go ahead and hit print on that one. This one says unlocked box, text first. Yeah. So you may want to text uh, Julie Greenwood and just okay. shoot her a text. And then I print two-sided, which you got, which is good. And I print that one in black and white, and that just keeps me on track. I know the black and white copy is mine, and the, the color one is theirs. You don't have to do it that way, but that's how I do it. Okay, where? Go where's to uh, print, oh, open as PDF. Scroll down.
should open here in a second. I love that you're on a Mac because it's the same language as I'm doing. Yeah, I'm not a Mac guy. This is Mariah's. <laughs> Dude, once you go Mac, you never go back. That's what I heard. Maybe I got it wrong, though. Uh, uh, so, yeah, file print. Okay, now you can go two-sided right next to the copies. And, yeah, continue. Uh, go to that PDF thing in the lower left corner. Open in PDF preview. Sorry, this is all Mac stuff, so if you have a PC, it's... It's a little bit different, but uh, I don't work on a PC anymore. You don't have to. You can print them both in color, but it's easy for me when I'm in the car and I've got a stack of them. Yeah. Um, so now hit, is this the PDF preview? Hit, yeah. Hit file print. You should have a black and white version and it's not necessary for you to do it in black and white I do it in black and white so like in my stack I'll have two of each and I'll have one of mine and one of theirs theirs is colored and then mine's black and white so I know like when I'm talking to them which one I give them and the reason yeah. I want to give them the correct one is because the agent's phone number and some of the the confidential information, such as alarm codes and stuff, is on uh, your version. Yeah. So, so if, if you can keep track of that, who cares if it's in black and white or color? But you can print that one. How do you do? You know how, where to go to do it in black or no? Uh, on this one. See, when I hit PDF preview, it usually gives me an option for black and white, but I'm not huh. really sure. Oops. All right. I'll just print this one out. I'll try to figure that out later. Perfect. So if I have a stack, in, in going back to your previous question, how many do I like to show between – Per day, five to seven is what I generally tell them. Like it's like um, it's like span of control from the fire department, right? Like four to six, five to seven, five being optimum, seven being max. And and if I've got an out of town buyer, if we want to show ten, that's fine. But okay. I generally tell them in each house as I say, hey, you know, Michael, it it it, it gets confusing looking at 10 houses or seven houses or five houses in one day. So I'm going to ask you every time before we leave that door, that front door of this house, two things. And, and one is if you were to, if you were to scale this on a one to 10, 10 being yeah. perfect home and zero being nothing like, like we want to trash it. Where would you scale this? And, and then I, two, where would you put this at this point in looking for homes on your top three? And what I want you to do, Michael, if it's not in your top three, I want you to fold it in half and I want you to throw it away. I want you to throw it on your floorboard. And we're only going to take three sheets home today and it's going to be your top three. And when we get to number seven, and the reason I'm asking you to the one to ten is if your number one so far is a number eight and your number seven is a number nine, then that's number one of your number 
of your one to three. And I really try to scale them into that. And then when I get to the end of the day, um, my call to action is pretty light. It's like, you know, you, you got a number nine, which is good. No house is going to be perfect. It's built unless you go build one yourself. Uh, what would you like to do with your number one, nine? Are you ready? Your, 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 your number one of your number three, are you ready to put an offering on this? So that's what I do. Does that make sense? Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what they kind of went over in that broker's class. He, he mentioned the one to 10 scale and then you always want to leave on a positive. He's saying, so he said, you know, ask them something they don't like about the house or what's keeping it from being a 10 or a nine. Yeah. And then ask him what, what makes it a nine or a 10 or, you know, he's, he said the same thing. There's no 10. So what makes it a nine? So leave on a positive. It's, Oh, it's the backyard. You know, I really like it. Okay. And then he, that's why he said he gives them these papers as to, so they can write notes and tell them to make sure they write the number down if it's an eight and what they don't like about it and what they do like about it. So that he did a good job. He did a good job. Cause I was never taught that. Um, now the, um, I forgot where I was going to go with that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. That's great. Yeah. And then and that's I'm always ending on a note of, are you ready yet? Do you want yeah. to offer it yet on your number one? Or do we need to look at more houses realize on an average and I'm, I'm fluffing the average to be uh, against my favor, but on the average, we, we show 15 houses to sell one or okay. an offer for one at least. Okay. So that gives you an idea. So in, in that helps me in the sense, Mike, that, it, that, uh, sometimes you're going to get these duds that just want to look at house after house after house. It helps me in my psychology to think I'm going to show 15 houses and I'm going to sell one. Okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Sorry, dude. My head is everywhere real quick on this. I, I was trying to write my second offer. Um, so I'm doing it as my, I'm my sister, Linda and Brian are buying my parents' house. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to keep getting confused on these freaking agencies and I, I under, I understand them a little bit, but, uh, okay. So this one broker, broker relationship with other parties. So this is a, this is a no, right? But why would it be a yes? Uh, she's the buyer. So my sister Brian and Linda are buying my parents' house. Yeah. Uh, so the only and your, thing it would be and your, is if you have random form twelve oh six attached, which is the buyer broker agreement. So if you're going to charge them a transaction fee in the in the uh, in the transaction, you're going to add 1206. Now I'll tell you the reason that we started adding transaction fees was kind of twofold. One, we're paying Julia from contract to close $395 plus grocery receipt stacks, uh, for, uh, transaction coordination. So will you, I tried to offset that by charging it to the buyer because we're adding an additional service. But one of the things I've done to family and uh, specifically firehouse, and I've been extending that to the police officers that I've been doing, I haven't been charging them that. I, I just eat the fee. But if you were going to charge them a transaction fee, you would use that buyer broker agreement, which is random form 1206. And, and if you use that, then you do have a written re agreement, so you'd hit yes on number one there. So this one? Yeah, yeah. So go ahead and exit out of this form. See that 1206 right there? Open up that form real quick. This one? Yep. Yeah, that's what I thought we were just on. No? No, you, you were on the purchase agreement. Scroll down. 
Yeah, this. Oh, well, if you're right in this form, then it's going to be yes every time. Oh, okay. Now scroll down. But it says other parties. That's why I didn't understand. Oh, broker relationship with other parties. Does, does broker have a written broker relationship with any other parties of the transaction? Are they? No. Do you have a listing agreement with them? Yes. Uh, uh, I think I. I think I wanted to do this one that my sister was buying my parents' house, and that it was going to be contingent on them selling their house. Okay. I think that's going to list it in the MLS. Huh? Are you going to list your parents' house in the MLS? Uh, so this is just the practice that I was doing for my second one. Well, if you had a listing agreement with your parents, in other words, you listed your parents' house. So I put, I put you as the, their broker actually. So if I was their broker, no, but if you were their broker, then it would be yes, because okay. you're in agreement with, with your parents. Yeah, so since you're their broker, then it, this is a no because this I don't have a relationship with anybody else in this transaction, right? Broker written relationship. It's not written. You would need to disclose in paragraph two because they're your parents that uh, the the uh, the sellers in the transaction are my parents, are the parents of the uh, buyer broker. And give me one second, Mike. I'll be right right back. Give me just one second. Okay. Raya. Did you smell something weird? Yeah, is that why you sprayed? No, hopefully it out right You did? That's what I said. Oh, I thought you were like something weird. Oh, did you get it then? No, I left it free. Where was it at? In the office. In the same spot? I don't know where it was, but it was like right in the middle. I don't know where it was before. Did you scrub the carpet or no? Sorry about that. So your draft one says, uh, do you have written rela relationships with anybody? Paragraph two does says, do you have any kind of relationship or interest in anybody? So paragraph one says, do I have a listing paperwork signed or do I have a, a buyer broker agreement with anybody? Where paragraph two says, do I have any friendship, familiar, familial family relationship with them does that make sense yeah between the two so, so this is this is a no yep and this is yes and i have to put that the buyers are my brother-in-law and sister and the my those are my parents exactly okay And then right here, Brian and Linda Johnson, right? The buyers? Yeah. And then I don't do this one because we're not looking for a house. We have the house, right? Exactly. Okay, so there's that. And then term, even on, like, if you have the house, do you usually do, like, six, eight months, or uh, six months? Three, does... Six months to a year. Generally, okay. Stuff's going to close within 45 to 60 days, but six months to a year just protects you to just in case it gets extended or something like that. Okay. And just so you know what this form is for, this just ensures that scroll up a little bit. This is what I've been charging buyers lately. Uh, scroll down. Oh, the, 
this is what I use this form for. And this is what I would suggest you guys use this form for. Um, we used to bring people into the office and make them sign this form before they ever even found the house. But we don't do that any, anymore. We use it essentially to charge them for the transaction fee that's going to be charged to us. Julia is going to charge a 395 plus gross receipts tax. Um, to tell you the truth, Michael, when you, when you represent a buyer, um, it, it will, it costs them nothing to use all of your services and you're going to be their number one go-to person for everything in the transaction. So for $395, I never get pushback. Yeah. yeah. I never got pushback for a year. So I increased it to 495 and I never got pushback. And then I realized, well, I might as well charge five ninety five, and you you can question me on my integrity or whatever you want to do, but we provide a service that's better than everybody else. So I don't feel guilty charging a five hundred ninety five dollar transaction fee to people that I don't know. I'll I, I'll add to that that when it's somebody that's a family or friend or lately police department and fire department, I hook them up and I don't charge them it. And I pay Julia's transaction coordination fee out of my pocket or out of the commission that I, that I get. Um, it's up to you if you want to use this form or not, you, you don't have to, but this is a way to easily, and you won't get pushback if you're confident in it, um, get your transaction coordination done for free. And, and you probably won't realize the value of that uh, because, to tell you the truth, the only person that we allowed to do that only once was Danielle. And I think she realizes it more than anybody because that first transaction, she found out how much Julia actually does for $95. Yeah. Uh, she leverages you a bunch. So – um, family, friends, I don't charge it. I just pay it. Uh, everybody else, they're paying me five ninety five. You can charge whatever the heck you want in there. So you can delete that one ninety five and put a hundred bucks if you wanted to, and make your transaction coordination only cost you two hundred ninety five. But um, I'll tell you, the more confident you are in that you're going to provide a service a level above anybody else they would ever go to, and the whole transaction only cost them two hundred and ninety five dollars for their or or three hundred and ninety five or five hundred and ninety five dollars for the service you provide. If you're confident in that, they're not gonna question you on it one bit. So um how much does it actually come down to then with the gross receipts? Is it like just for it depends on where the property's at. Uh Rio Rancho's got a seven point four three seven five percent tax rate so it comes to four hundred and twenty four dollars and change okay albuquerque's got a 7.5 so it's a little bit more than that and so you basically just get to keep the rest of after that's covered exactly okay nice yeah. so that's that buyer broker agreement and if you've got one of these written with somebody as a buyer then you need to disclose that on the purchase agreement and we can you can exit out of this form and we can go to the purchase agreement and I can show you where you do that. This one? Yes, sir. So pretty much any form uh, that's a, it's an in, initial form, whether it be the buyer broker agreement or the purchase agreement or anything like that's going to have the broker duties attached to it. And you'll see it's the first two to three pages of the contract once it opens up here. So that's your buyer broker duties. And on the second page here, You see it's already checked in paragraph one, transaction broker with a written agreement. If you did, if you actually did your sister and your mom, you're probably not going to 
charge in them for that. That's your hookup to them. And, and to tell you the truth, that's your, your add value to where you make them feel good about using their son and their brother in the transaction. Like I saved you 595 bucks. So if you did that, you'd, you'd click the first box, which is transaction broker without a written agreement. But if you have 1206 attached, you're going to check the second box. And in our forms, I've got it checked as a second box. So if you're not going to do that, you're going to want to edit it. So without a written agreement, though, they can just uh, they can just whoever it is, they can just go to a different realtor, right? They sure can. Okay, because that's the written agreement. The twelve oh six is what says you're their realtor and you have six months to sell, them, get a house or whatever. Exactly. Okay. And the, I keep getting confused. Agent, if I was an agent for them, what what is the difference with the just the transaction, the agent? I'll tell you, you'll you'll probably never be an agent for somebody. An agent means that you can make decisions on, on the their behalf of your principal. So in other okay. words, you could sign for them. I've okay. never done that in my career. I've been doing yeah. it for a decade. Okay. Paragraph two says, is it an in-house transaction? And that would be like uh, if somebody else in the – you were representing the buyer and you were purchasing a house – uh, where the listing agent was somebody else from Legendary Properties. Yeah, and that's that. So I put you. So, yep, you did. You did a great, perfect, perfect. If I if I was the listing agent, you did it perfect. Okay. If it was somebody outside of Legendary Properties, you wouldn't check anything in paragraph two. Yep. And then scroll down a little bit. Paragraph five, I think. So. Dual representation. Um, I have to check this, right? Because the brokerage is representing both? No. No. Uh, In-house transaction is the brokerage. Uh, represents both. Brokerage is representing Yeah, actually, you're true. Yep. You're right. Okay. So... Yeah, it's not dual agency though because I'm not injury property. Not. Yeah, and then paragraph four, you're never going to use because we don't work as agents. Paragraph five, do you have do you have a relationship with somebody? Uh, you'd have to hit yes in this one because that's your that's your uh, your sister and your your mother. So you would have to add random form twenty one hundred. You see that in the paragraph five. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. If, if you didn't have a relationship with them, then you wouldn't have to say that. Okay. So. All righty. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll scroll through this. I was just kind of confused, got caught up on two of those. And then how do I add that form then? I think I watched the video. I, I I just couldn't. I think I remembered, but I exit out of this form. <clears throat> and I probably haven't updated it since they added 2100 because that only happened about a month ago. Oh, okay. But all you have to do after this quits refreshing, I'll show you. You're just going to hit the add button in the upper right hand corner. And <sighs> Under search, just hit 2100. Right. And check the box next to the 2100. Uh, not yeah. commercial, though? Yeah, it'd be, uh, it'd be the first one. It is? Yeah. Brokerage duty supplemental. Yep. But why is it, they're all the same, but they one says commercial. It they're they're under different files, so it's the same file oh, under oh, okay. under lead oh. and under commercial and under it doesn't matter. So just oh, okay. that. and then you'll see at the bottom. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Uh, maybe up above. Look for twenty one hundred. There it is. 
And this is where you describe and disclose to the other party what your relationship is with them. Okay. All righty. Yeah. I can do that. Um, real quick, I wanted to – you would do a CMA on land, obviously, right? You can try. There's going to be less comps, but let's let's try to do it. Let's try. Okay. So if you're okay with it, just to unconfuse all the tabs, if you want to delete all the tabs that don't have to do with that, we'll, we'll do that because we're going to open up a couple tabs. Okay. Uh, Oops. Oh, well. Should have saved, right? <laughs> All right. Open up Flex MLS, right? Yeah. It is 1950 Crest the uh, yeah. address of the land? To go to yeah. map search, and then you hit that is the or read later. You can read those later. So under residential, do you see up in the upper left-hand corner under menu? Go to land. Most, for the most part, you're going to be doing residential, but since this is land, you're going to pick the correct category. And then uh, on the map screen, perfect. You're going to hit the pin, plug in the address. And... Uh Commercial land is still commercial. We we can't, we don't do that, right? We we don't we don't. Okay. But um, if you find, are they doing commercial land? No, this isn't. My mom found somebody that uh, is opening a dojo or something and said he would uh, be giving me a call. But she asked if I did commercial because he's looking for commercial land. So I I told him we don't. So yeah. If you want to scroll out a little bit, and this is uh, this isn't the address, huh? 1951 Crest. No, no, it's over here. I think that's Crest View, because there is a Crest View, but it that that one's over here. Okay. How, how would I unpin that? Um, remove in. Yeah. So go ahead and find the address. And this is the weakness of land is uh, it, it's not always accurate. Right here. Okay, so hit that pin again. And then locate. Uh, you may be able to hit locate, see what happens. Down below. Oh. Just do the zip. No, X out of that. See if you can drag that pin up above. No. That's okay. So you know where it's at. So scroll out on the map a little bit. And the question you're asking yourself in your mind is, what is comparable land in that area? So is it just that circle of 19th around... Uh, 14th and 17th or is it more is it is it all the way west side to southern all, all the way to 10th and you're going to draw your polygon map search so what would you say uh, it's probably, uh, is it commercial land no no this is residential i would say that it's probably going to be uh, west side 10th is going to be on the west hand side and then all the way up to Southern. Realize the closer, and the, the only reason I know this, because I know this it, by, by experience, is, is the closer you get to West Side, some of that is uh, uh, septic tanks and wells. I'm not sure if it's like 
I don't know where the border is, where City of Rio Rancho actually brought water up into that area. Um, and then, so perfect, perfect. Let's say that that's, that's the area that seems comparable. Then go to status on the left-hand side. And on the Mac, you're going to hit command and add closed. Closed and pending. Closed, pending, active. Did you, in and scroll down under that, did com, closed get highlighted? Yeah. Yep. It, so nothing sold in that area. So it's, it, it'll be a little bit difficult. Is it a half acre? Is it an acre? What is it? Um, it's a little over an acre. It was uh, okay. 1.34. So let's go back to the other tab. So it's a one and a third acres. Um, and I would hit those. Let's go uh, acres one plus. So minimum one plus. Yeah. Let's see what shows up. Okay, now you got 14, that's more realistic and you got enough to at least bring some data in. Now hit the view results. So you have 14 one acre plus parcels. Scroll down, you, you see the, um, the second tab says acres. If there's anything yep. that's like 15 acres, you're gonna wanna take that out, but Scroll, keep on scrolling. That's 1.45, 1.61, 2.34. So I would hit the box right under results 14. That selects them all. And I would take out that 2.34 and that 1.61. And then go ahead and hit the CMA button, which is, yep, perfect. So this isn't a great look at things, but if, if you can look at it um, on average for what you pulled, uh, stuff was on high 72.5. Um, if you can see even, the, it, do you see the line of averages right next to, on the left yeah. hand side, you see list count 12, live, line of averages 1.17 acres, and then you see Dollar per acre, forty-two thousand dollars, eighty-two hundred and or forty-two thousand eight hundred and twenty-eight dollars per acre is on average. This is one point uh, three four acres. So times that by one point three four acres. So if you pull up your calculator, yeah, and I was saying uh, we're kind of thinking going in because it's listed for fifty-nine. 59.9. So I was kind of thinking going in at 50 and seeing what, what happens with it. I don't think you'd be wrong, man. Because, uh, and then, man, I didn't, <clears throat> I'm trying to do as much as I can for them because it's well and all that. So I was trying to call the utility companies and see how much everything would be. Uh, that's kind of a pain in the butt. So I called the city and found out the impact fees alone would be like 14,000. And then I called the realtor to see if he knew anything about how much it would be. And he said, usually a well is like 20 grand. The septic would be like 20 grand. So just a loan on the impact fees and those two would be another 54,000. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, dang it. I don't realize how much money all that costs to, <laughs> to put it in. Yeah. You did your due, due diligence. You were, you, you gave them a lot of service for that. Yeah, and I figured, because I was asking Mariah's mom, I said, have you ever done that? She's like, no, I've never. <laughs> so I timed it. It would be uh, 57, 389. So, so you were right on the same page is, is the way that I would tell you. Unfortunately, okay. these are all actives and none of them is sold, but there's nothing that's sold in the area. So you just got to go off of what's listed. And uh, I was going in 50 would be good. Yeah, I think that you're you're right on point, man. Because uh, 
you see the map? Yeah. Because this is also kind of a prime spot, you know, so it's the end of the cul-de-sac and yeah, back to two backyards. And well, there's an arroyo here too, so it's kind of yeah. nice. You don't have anybody right behind you. You still have a view to the east too, so yeah, that's what I wanted it. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice lot. Yeah, it's actually really nice. Is that and then they have cul-de-sac paved? I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe the, does this show paved? This is probably paved, huh? Yeah, you have to drive it to see. Yeah, because this is yet white. And this isn't, so I don't know if that's a key. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's a cool lot. Yeah, an acre. And they're actually you can actually buy all three of these and save like fifteen thousand, or you can they have them listed separately. So that took a while. We were trying to figure out why there's two listings on just this house. What's right to the east of that in that lot right? Right off of that Vargas, right there. Yeah, what's there? Anything? I don't think so. No. Um, How can I? Would I have to open a new tab again to see what's? Uh, to figure out that address. Ooh. You'd almost have to drive it to figure out that address, and then you could look it up in the tax records, and you could see if it's commercial or if it's residential. I assume that's probably going to be residential. But it's not listed for sale right now. Which is yeah, there's nothing. Okay. So, but that's a cool lot, man. I mean, it's so this a lot on the end of a cul-de-sac. You could put your... Yeah house on the front end of the cul-de-sac and still have like area to build on the back end in that 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 back end of the cul-de-sac would face east so you could see the mountains and such be yeah cool. the way they're gonna do it they're gonna build um i think like this and then they're gonna have half the house for them and half the house for their parents and then on the back half they're gonna have all windows lining the house so they can kind of go into like a little uh day room or something and sit in there and look at the mountains so that'd be sweet man it's, it sounds cool man but so i, I have a meeting with her, um cindy and her mom on sunday so I'll probably take this and just show the average and how that calculates to fifty seven thousand and and then the median says 54 but i think we should come in at 50 and just see where it goes from there yeah i agree with you Okay. I mean, look at those average days on market on the yeah. on the right hand side. I mean, people have been on from twenty four days all the way up to fourteen hundred and five days on market. It's not like a lot of land is selling in there. In fact, we couldn't even find one lot that sold in that area. So, I would, I would try to negotiate. It's not like you're going to get in a multiple offer situation. Yeah. Yeah, and he called back. He's been calling back and wondering what's going on. So you could kind of tell that they're they're probably wanting an offer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, land's kind of crazy, man. I never knew all those fees and like, yeah, she was asking how how do I find out how much all that would be? I was like, ah, I don't know. I'll try. I'll try my best. So. Yeah, and unfortunately, your best resource is to call the utility companies and and check, and that's the quite frankly, the pain in the ass of land and why it's not super profitable because you're going to make yeah. 1500 bucks off of this. Yeah. Uh, and, and but I, if you're for, for me, I, it's I can use folks. this. <laughs> yeah. It's for your folks. Then do it. I mean, and you got time to do it, do it. But it, it if it's for money, then I, I certainly wouldn't go any advertising out there that you sell land or whatever. Um, yeah. So it's more of a customer service thing than anything. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, man. Um, I know I have a lot more, but time's up. <laughs> yeah. And, and go, man. You're good. I have two calls that I have to make tonight. But besides that, I'm good. So whatever you need, man, I more than anything, Mike, if, if I can tell you um, – I can see the discipline in your life in other areas. You did 
an incredible job disciplining yourself to learn how to to fight and do taekwondo and you 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 made it to the top of the ranks in there you're you're physically fit more than 95 percent of the population like you have the discipline and if i can encourage you in any way if you have that level of discipline in real estate you will be successful but yeah. the same sacrifice that you had to make to taekwondo to to being in the shape that you're in uh you would have to translate it here to 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 have success so i mean like when you couldn't beat up mike legendary and you fought to be able to kick him in the face that's a fucking feat <laughs> man that's a fucking feat and if you do that dude like nobody taught you how to kick mike legendary in the face Nobody's going to be able to teach you how to take it to the 95% beating everybody else. But I can give you the seeds that if you take on your own and, 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 and give the same aggressiveness in those two other areas that I know that you're capable of doing, because honestly, dude, you beat people out in physical fitness. You, you've shown your, your ability to work in, in even Taekwondo and stuff. If you do that in real estate, you'll fucking kill it, bro. You'll kill yeah. and and I will give you the direction in doing that. It's just what you do with that direction. I was talking yeah. to some other people this week and I've been trying to just feed you knit pits in each of the, the webinars. Um, what you do and what you take from that and then what you put to action will prove your success over time. So if you've got like a, a five year out like vision, in five years, if you put that much work ethic into it, you will kill it, dude. You will kill it. I have no doubt that you're the kind of guy that can uh, that can make a lot of money in real estate because you've already shown your work ethic in other areas of your life. Um, the only call to action that I would say is, dude, I'm calling you out to the table, man. If, if you want this, you can do it. Do it, man. And I will yeah. give you the seeds and then work – Work your ass off for it. Yeah, I think because uh, just right now, dude, I have my hands in too many, too many buckets or whatever, however you want to say it. Uh, totally. And you know, I finally, finally sat down because every night I get home like nine, ten o'clock, and I'm just exhausted. So I've been, you know, meaning to do all these things. So I finally did that first offer, and I was up till like three in the morning, and got two hours of sleep, and that kind of messed my whole week up, you know. Yeah. So I think I, I really need to start scheduling better and kind of just – it stinks because I need to work with Justin now to make money because I'm struggling like that, but I need to also put time towards this. So it's just been really stressful for in that sense. But I'm thinking uh, summer's hitting, and since Mariah still gets paid through the summer, she's probably going to find another job. So that might free up some time for me to not have to work so much with Justin and put more time to this. So. Well, I'm here for you, man. I'll, I, yeah. I, I want to give you guys like the the ten year head start because I'm yeah. ten years ahead of you, and I'll give you exactly what I'm doing. It doesn't mean that you have to copy me to the T, but I'll tell you what I'm doing is working to the T. Like, yeah, we're May 10th right now, and I've got 20 and pending or closed. Um, yeah. you could do that. I know you could do that because you have the work ethic that I've got. Like where, yeah. where you talk about like real estate, I talk about physical fitness. Like I'm fucking exhausted, dude. I get off 48 hours of work and then I work 40 to 50 hours and then I go back to work and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how do I fit in time to, to actually get my body back to where it was. I yeah. don't know yet. Uh, if you can help with that, I'd appreciate it, but I don't know yet, but, uh, but it, it, it that all counts on me is it's my determination. If I'm going to, yeah. if I'm going to do it and I have to wake up at 4am to get to the CrossFit gym at, at five 30 to do it, then, then that's on me. Like it's my, yeah. and I, I totally yeah. know you already have made those decisions in life and you've already uh, exercised that muscle of your mind to do the muscle of your body and the muscle of, of being able to be an elite fighter like you are. So you already know what that takes. It's just translating to real estate, and you'll kill it, man. Yeah, and that's why I, I go to the gym early in the morning, dude, because if I don't, I, I won't make it. <laughs> yeah. Too much going on each day, and that's 
Yeah, even just like as little things as little as dishes now, I'm like making sure they just get done now because tomorrow's it's it's there's a whole new day of new things that are gonna go on. I'm not gonna have time tomorrow, you know. Yeah. So just get it done today so you don't have to stress about it tomorrow because tomorrow brings a whole new door of new things. So you have no idea how much that discipline when you were ten years old getting into Taekwondo gym actually oh, yeah. you to have success, man. In life. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's whatever it is, it, it real estate, physical fitness, being a fighter, being in the fire department, like you, you've trained your mind to know what it takes to take success. And I'll give you the one, two, three, and all you have to do is apply the equation. And I'm available to you anytime. Use that uh, Scheduly app and we'll go over what the one, two, three are. I'm here for you, man. Like, like I, I, I'll, what gets me off more than anything, like, like, do I want to sell more homes? Hell yeah, I do. But it, it, it kind of gets me going a little bit to take somebody that just got their license and prove that, uh, that the formula that I've been following is just a formula of success. And I really believe it is. So yeah. let me know, man, I'm here for you, bro. Well, man, I re I do appreciate it. And yeah, I need to get all this together. And so, and I'm working on my Excel spreadsheet, but it's just, uh, it's been taking longer than expected. So sure. Hey, do you, I, mind if I, uh, if I post this recording? No, not at all. Okay, cool. Cool. It may be yeah. beneficial to somebody else. So I'll post it on the Facebook page if you want to review it. And, uh, and then let me know, dude, use that app. I think I texted it to you or emailed you. Anytime you want to do these, just plug, plug, plug me in the calendar and, uh, and I'll be here for you. Cool, man. All right, brother. I really appreciate it. Hey, you got it, man. You have a good uh, night and weekend. We'll see you, bro. All right. Bye.